According to the late Edgar Cayce, the Akashic Records can be seen as the universe's supercomputer, a central storage facility of all information. Collectively, the Akashic Records are a field of energy that holds the past, present, and future knowledge of all things, and it manifests everywhere at once. Within this all-encompassing field are individual energy fields for each being that are immensely vast in their own right. The Akashic Records are just like the modern Wi-Fi network. We can't see the Wi-Fi internet, yet we know it's everywhere around us. It's something invisible, yet if you access it, you can reach limitless information. Pretty much anywhere on the planet that has internet access, you can find these hidden secret patterns and codes that are floating around us. It's the same thing with the Akashic Records. You only need to tune your consciousness into the right frequency to be able to access this information. Before we continue, we'd like to thank our friends from Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. Skillshare's mission is to close the professional skills gap and provide universal access to high-quality learning. I really like their calligraphy classes, which teach you the ancient art of calligraphy, together with their illustration classes, which can help you bring to life all of your visions and ideas. The first 500 people who click the link in the description will get two months of free access. Explore thousands of classes and fuel your creativity and career with Skillshare. The term Akashic Records was first coined in 1883 by the author Alfred Percy Sinet in his book Esoteric Buddhism. In it, he describes how, according to Eastern philosophy, universal records physically exist in the ever-pervasive realm known as the Akasha, which can be accessed by enlightened individuals. But what is interesting is that references to the Akashic records can be found thousands of years earlier in the ancient Hindu scriptures. The Mahabharata and the Puranas all mention tales about this mystical famous Vedic sage known as Narada. Tradition has it that Narada transcended consciousness to gather his knowledge and give teachings of great wisdom. Narada had access to some kind of an essential knowledge that is in the fabric of the divine cosmic order. He has this mystical ability to tap into the universal knowledge directly from the Akasha. Akasha is actually a Sanskrit word which means ether in both the elemental and metaphysical sense. Another ancient being who supposedly accessed the Akashic records was the ancient Egyptian deity known as Thoth or Hermes Trismegistus. Before he was revered as a god, Thoth was the first great Egyptian philosopher and founder of the ancient mystery schools, receiving his wisdom while in meditative trances, writing over 40 books, including the Emerald Tablet, the Book of Thoth, and the Divine Pymander. To the Egyptians, his knowledge was so vast and all-encompassing that they first began to credit him as the communicator with the gods eventually inducting him into the Egyptian pantheon. But is there any proof of the existence of the Akashic Records? Well, we are limited by modern day understandings of what qualifies as proof, anything that cannot be perceived by our physical senses, or something that is, foremost, impossible to perceive, it's hard to validate its existence. The truth is, there really is no way to prove in the material way that we currently define proof, the existence of the Akashic Records, because it cannot be seen, touched, heard, or otherwise measured. Like Nikola Tesla said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. But even so, after years of studying the nature of electromagnetic and gravitational fields, celebrated futurist and Nobel Prize nominee Dr. Irvin Laszlo announced that he has found evidence of the A, or Akashic field. Dr. Laszlo took work from the discovery of the quantum zero-point energy, 
which is a radiation field that exists all around us that we can't perceive, but we can detect it indirectly. The existence of the quantum zero-point energy is very solid theoretically, and it was first discovered by Albert Einstein. So we know that the zero-point energy exists, and it carries a lot of information about the universe in it. Dr. Laszlo proposed that this didn't carry just a physical information about the physics of the universe, but also it contained intellectual information. According to theoretical physicists, zero-point energy is an all-pervasive sea of quantum energy waves that are invisible, but exist throughout the universe. The fabric of space itself is made of energy and information. And the way this information propagates through the universe is through waves. We call these quantum waves. And so, the Akashic field is made of quantum waves that are common to all intelligent life. This means that all human brains, extraterrestrial brains, and any sort of otherworldly beings also have the ability to tap into these quantum waves receiving information. This idea of an intelligent informational field that we can access with our consciousness is not pseudoscience. It's not superstition. It is a basic fact that our scientists confirm is actually true. Nearly two decades prior to Laszlo's discovery, Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman published his groundbreaking work in quantum physics, The Strange Theory of Light and Matter. In it, he explored the idea that electrons in our brains can be activated and informed by quantum waves, affecting our thoughts and subconscious. Richard Feynman talked about the quantum entanglement theory and the idea that you could have subatomic particles at any distance whatsoever and they could affect each other, where information can be sent instantaneously. The human brain is full of electrical activity that creates radiation that a very sensitive radio receiver could pick up. And other minds, other places, would also be able to send such waves. Feynman found from the idea of a quantum field of information that even an electron moving in our brains could be receiving radio signals from the past, but to compensate, it must also receive waves from the future. This means that every electron in our brain is actually a receiver. After all, Nikola Tesla was right when he said, My brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. We now know that information could traverse to any part of the universe instantaneously. This could mean that intelligent civilizations could send complex information to us by quantum wave propagation or other means. They could very much be nudging society along through people having apparent visions, which could be nothing more complex than a radio broadcast, some sort of thought transference through the Akashic Record. Stories about people who accessed the Akashic Records can be found not only in our ancient past, but even in our recent history. In 1923, the 12-year-old Bulgarian peasant girl called Vangeria was playing in a field when a tornado carried her off into the air. Later she was found by her parents, barely alive. She was very frightened and strangely, her eyes were covered with sand and dust and she was unable to open them because of the pain. After three unsuccessful operations, she remained completely blind. After the accident, slowly, Von Gedea developed a striking ability to predict the future and began making accurate revelations for the local population. By the 1980s, the blind prophet who adopted the name Baba Vanga, which means Grandmother Vanga in Bulgarian, had given thousands of accurate predictions and gained a reputation as the Nostradamus of the Balkans. Baba Vanga said that she could see everything in her mind's eye, and when she would look at a person, she said that she could see their whole life in its totality, from birth, through their life, until death, as if she was watching a movie. 
She was the study of many Bulgarian and Soviet scientists who scientifically started testing her and interviewing her and the people that she read. Some of the most prominent politicians and leaders of the Eastern Bloc traveled to her village just to receive her readings. Her predictions were extremely accurate, which tells us that the ability to retrieve information beyond this earth plane has nothing to do with our five senses. In fact, when she became blind, it is as if her other senses developed to receive messages and information about the past, present, and future. She predicted the day of Stalin's death, for which she spends a short time in prison, being questioned by the Soviets. She predicted the tragedy of 9-11, the nuclear explosion in Chernobyl, the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, the sinking of the Russian submarine Kursk, and many other world-changing events. We must remember, these amazing things are coming from someone who was born a peasant, who has not read books, had a slight, maybe functional literacy, and had no access to televisions or any modern source of information. You have to wonder, where was she getting this information from? Is it possible she was able to access some kind of knowledge that's out there that normal people cannot access? Throughout the centuries, there have been oracles and prophets that have claimed contact with otherworldly realms as a source of their inspiration. One of the people who clearly could access the Akashic Records was Michel de Nostradamus, better known as Nostradamus. He predicted many things, including the Great Fire of London in 1666, the French Revolution, and even the rise of power of Adolf Hitler. He claimed that he succeeded by using methods found in ancient Greek oracles, Christian mysticism, and even in the Kabbalah. Nostradamus was one of the first people recorded to access the Akashic Records. He tries, in his labored narratives, to explain a divine state, where everything is happening, not in a linear sense, but all happening at once. Past, present, and future concepts bind into one thing. Most prophets say that they are tapping into another reality beyond this earthly existence. So, potentially, they could be tapping into a layer of reality that is shared by otherworldly beings, like extraterrestrials, for example. Perhaps the Akashic Records are all around us. It's simply that our brains are not evolved yet to see them. Just like Nikola Tesla, Albert Einstein also claimed he received the ideas of his greatest inventions from some outside source. Einstein claims he came up with the theory of relativity in an instance of a second. He said the idea came into his mind out of nowhere. Another thing which leads me to believe that the Akashic Records are influencing the collective consciousness of humanity is the fact that some of the greatest inventions are received simultaneously by different people around the globe, which weren't connected in any way. Two Columbia University sociologists, William Ogburn and Dorothy Thomas, publish a paper in the Academy of Political Science Journal entitled, Are Inventions Inevitable? In it, they cite 148 instances of simultaneous inventions where two or more individuals, each operating without knowledge of the other's work, came up with the same groundbreaking innovation or theory at the same time. How is it that people in different continents, different cultures, can come up with the same idea at almost exactly the same time? Einstein's discovery of relativity was preceded almost simultaneously by a theoretical physicist, a Frenchman named Poincaré. Perhaps as time passes and our collective consciousness evolves into a new level of perception, vital knowledge is being released into the collective field of information and millions of people are able to receive it and express it. There are many other individuals who did extraordinary exploring of the Akashic Records, including Su Jujin, a man from China, who discovered and describes anyone's life history only by knowing the person's first name. According to spiritual beliefs, the Akashic Record is also known as the Book of Life for an individual, and it contains every thought, word, intent, emotion, and deed of that soul, from the time it leaves its point of origin until the end of time. 
This field also holds the deepest meanings and connections between each piece of information, plus the soul's purpose, callings, talents, and lessons. Information in each soul's record becomes available through a certain unique frequency, like a fingerprint encoded into the energies of the universe. The Akashic Records are the energetic recordings of your soul's journey since your beginning. It is everything about you, all around you and within you. It is everything you are, have been, and the potentials you are yet to become. It is a special field of energy that permeates your entire being. It is not something separate from you, but an integral part of you. I believe the Akashic Records are living, changing documents. As you change, heal, and grow, your personal Akashic Records are updated to reflect those changes. As you can imagine, your Akashic Records hold an infinite amount of information. There is no end to the information you can explore about yourself and your relationships with others when working in the Akashic Records. The information is always presented to you in a loving and compassionate way from your divine spiritual family. There are specific beings, energetic aspects, that specialize in the energy field of the Akashic Records and are called the Record Keepers. Record Keepers are also a part of your divine spiritual family. These divine beings have always been at your side, eagerly waiting to assist you. Out of respect for your free will, they do wait until you initiate contact and ask for help. The information that is obtained from your Akashic Records is a direct result of your questions. Your questions guide the Record Keepers and Ascended Masters to the right energetic space to retrieve the answers that you are ready to know. Sometimes we think we are ready to know something, but in reality, we are not. In those times, the answers seem to elude us, only to become crystal clear in the oddest and most unlikely moments. Imagine an infinite apple orchard, full of apple trees, which are chock full of apples. Each apple holds the key to different experiences your soul has had, and each tree represents themes that you have experienced throughout your soul's journey. When you want to know a certain piece of information, you have to come up with a way to direct the record keepers to the right tree and then to the right apple. By choosing the right apple, you will get the information you are seeking, which will facilitate your healing and growth. The record keepers are the energetic aspects that tend to these immense apple orchards, and when you ask a question, it helps to guide them to the correct tree. The more specific your question, the closer you get to the specific apple that holds the piece of information you are seeking. The potential for healing occurs when you are able to really get down to the core of an issue, the seed of knowledge and wisdom that is hidden within the specific apple. Often the awareness of the core cause of an issue is enough to create the energetic shift that results in a healing, a shift in energetic frequency to the next higher level of divine love and light, which may manifest in the spiritual, physical, mental, or emotional realms. There is an unlimited potential for healing when working with the energy of the Akashic Records. The extent of the healing itself is directly related to your level of commitment and intent to heal yourself. Once you set your intent within yourself that you are ready to do your inner work, the Record Keepers readily come forward to assist you as best they can. Like all other divine aspects of energy, the Record Keepers radiate upon you the energy of divine love and provide guidance when you ask or when you make it known in some way that you want help. Your divine spiritual family would never interfere with your free will. Therefore, you must initiate the connection and ask for what you want or need. They are eagerly awaiting your initiation and are ready to respond. Having a strong, clear connection with your inner wisdom is more than a gift. It is a divinely given right. You do not have to earn this special talent. It is not something that is only for the chosen few. It is for everyone who takes the time to make it known that they want it. As a co-creator of your reality, it is up to you to initiate change in your life. 
First, you must ask for help. Then you must be willing to put to use the information you receive. It is always your choice. But if you don't put into practice what you are learning, then nothing in your life is going to change. You know the old saying, the definition of insanity is to keep doing what you have always done and expect to get different results. Our divine family of light sends us messages and guidance all of the time. It is up to us to either acknowledge those messages or ignore them. They plant the seeds of light and knowledge and wait for us to nurture those seeds. They wait patiently as we allow those seeds to mature into wisdom. They also watch with infinite compassion and acceptance if and when we choose to squash those seeds instead of nurturing them. They radiate us with the same loving energy even if we choose to make the same old choices and create the same old patterns, essentially ignoring any guidance they were trying to provide. That is what free will is all about. The main purpose for working in your Akashic Records is not to receive mandates about what to do with your life or how to live your life, but to provide you with the information, knowledge, and wisdom you need to broaden your perspective, allowing you to make healthier choices. In other words, working with the energy of the Akashic Records provides you with the support you need to grow and evolve personally and spiritually. When you have clear intent that you are ready to heal all aspects of your life, then your true work begins. Spirit responds to your requests to heal and provides you with the opportunities for growth. Each time something comes up for you in your life that pushes your buttons, it is Spirit's way of providing you with an opportunity for growth. It has always been this way. The difference is that now you will have the ability to go into your records, dig around, explore, and uncover the core of the issue at hand. Once you have uncovered the core issue, you are able to begin the healing process. The record keepers are waiting with anticipation for you to begin this personal and spiritual journey. Through your connection with your Akashic records and your divine spiritual family, you will experience deeper and deeper levels of self-empowerment and self-direction as you discover the euphoria of going within to connect directly with your divine source. With each visit to your Akashic Records, you have the potential to heal another piece of yourself. With each healing of your energy, you will feel more and more complete and whole. Past, present, and future all connected to make us who we are and give us what we have. The consequences of our actions will determine the responses of our futures. We have to accept the actions we have done and the consequences to those actions in order for us to move forward or change the path we are on. Thank you for watching and don't forget to click the link in the description below to claim your two-month free membership at Skillshare. We're sure you'll find some amazing courses there and learn many new skills. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you're new, press subscribe and the bell next to it for future notifications.